Ah, the thrill and excitement of building your business on your own, not beholden to the suits, and living dangerously close to bankruptcy. What am I talking about? Bootstrapping. In this video series, Bootstrap Financing 101, I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to maximize your setup as a bootstrap to startup and introduce you to some financing ideas you may not have considered. My name is Tony Wilson, certified public accountant, certified management accountant, and I'm the owner and proprietor of Equip Fractional CFO Services, where we help software development agency owners like you build the businesses they love without going bankrupt in the process. It's important to note for all my videos, this is meant for educational purposes only and should not be construed or considered as investment or legal advice. Always consult with your appropriate advisors before making any significant decisions in your business. In the first video of the series, we're gonna define what bootstrapping is, why some people choose it, and also why some entrepreneurs still take on institutional investment. To kick things off, let's define what bootstrapping really is. At its core, bootstrapping refers to the practice of funding your business without relying on external institutional funding. In other words, you're not gonna be taking on investments from venture capitalists, private equity, or other large institutional investors. Now, if somebody else isn't gonna be giving you money, how are you financing your business as a bootstrapper? Typically, you're using your own savings, revenue generated by the business, maybe some small loans, and occasionally through small friends and family equity financing rounds. Now, notice how I mentioned small loans. Technically, debt financing is still an option for bootstrappers, although it's not as common. Most bootstrap tech startups avoid debt financing because debt is not an advisable financing mechanism for such a risky industry, but that'll be a topic for a different video. I also mentioned that you may see bootstrappers raise a small friends and family round for equity financing. Again, this still fits the definition of bootstrapper because these types of equity investors are often much smaller and less sophisticated. They're not gonna be as disruptive to a bootstrapper's business plans as an institutional investor may be. So we know what bootstrapping is, why do people choose it? The number one reason why so many entrepreneurs opt to bootstrap their venture, control. Bootstrapping allows you to retain full control over your company. You don't have to dilute your ownership by giving away equity to investors. If you think about why an entrepreneur starts their business, it's most often because they wanna build an intentional life and give themselves opportunities that their W-2 job just couldn't afford. They wanna call the shots on when and how and why they build their businesses and not be forced onto one particular path by someone who needs to meet their rate of return targets. Why would that person go and give themselves a boss who arguably is far more demanding than their boss back in corporate America? Bootstrapping can, at least in theory, provide more control than taking on money from the big boys. The second reason why entrepreneurs choose to bootstrap their venture, learning and resourcefulness. When you're bootstrapping, you're gonna be forced to be resourceful. You'll find creative solutions to problems and develop a strong sense of financial discipline and gain invaluable experience in the process. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of fully funded tech startups who blew their way through tons of capital without much financial discernment or discipline. Growth at all costs, they'll say. As a bootstrapper though, you don't have the luxury or leeway to be lax in your spending controls. If you're not finding creative ways to do more with less, you won't be in business for very long. Now it may be stressful, but bootstrapping is a surefire way of forcing you to learn and be resourceful with very little. The third reason entrepreneurs opt for bootstrapping, proof of concept. Bootstrapping forces you to focus on generating revenue from the get-go. No more, I'll launch the app in a year from now, or we've gotta get all the kinks out before we go to market. As a bootstrapper, you feel the fire to get out and charge something, even if you don't feel ready. When you're forced to get out there and ask for the sale, you'll find out a lot quicker whether your product truly has product market fit. This not only validates your business idea, but also demonstrates its potential for growth. Now, while bootstrapping offers many benefits, it's important to acknowledge that it might not be the best choice for every situation. Let's talk about why an entrepreneur might opt for institutional funding instead. The first reason to get money from VCs, rapid growth. Institutional funding can provide the capital needed to scale your business quickly, especially if your industry is highly competitive. Take for example, the AI craze. If you have to wait on a bootstrapper's growth trajectory, your product may become irrelevant by the time you reach product market fit. In highly innovative markets, it can be difficult to make progress quickly enough to gain traction without institutional funding. All this capital can be used to bolster your go-to-market strategy, fund the necessary overhauls in your MVP, and help you to hire key players on your team that'll give you the expertise you need to grow for the stage of your business. The second reason some entrepreneurs opt for venture capitalists, networking and expertise. 
Many investors bring more than just money to the table. They can offer valuable connections, industry insights, and expertise that can guide your business in the right direction. Sometimes the investor themselves is the one with the expertise and partnership you need. They may have built their own successful business and know what it takes to navigate growth. An alternative to using institutional investors for networking and garnering expertise in your business is to hire your own board of advisors or join entrepreneurial groups like EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. The third reason that some choose to opt for big funding, big picture vision. Institutional investors have a broader perspective on market trends and opportunities, which can help you shape a long-term vision for your company. You may have started the business with the goal to be the leading service provider in the Kansas City metro area, but with the right visionary, they may be able to see this service be the leader for the entire Midwest. Or perhaps your business's expertise in providing educational materials for low-code software is the perfect complement to a private equity firm's portfolio of software development boot camps. There's a clarity of vision for how your unique business fits into a greater value proposition for the market. Finding the right institutional investor may very well lead to a more holistic and big picture vision for your company. And there you have it, a brief look at what exactly bootstrapping is, why so many choose it, and also why entrepreneurs still opt for institutional money. Whether you're considering going bootstrapping route for its control and resourcefulness, or you're eyeing institutional funding for its growth potential and expertise, the decision ultimately depends on your business's unique needs and goals. That's all for this video. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and reach out to me directly. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of our future videos. Until next time.